And welcome back to the second segment of episode 133 of Sold with Updike Pew. We have a great second segment, and we're going to talk about <laughs> turf grass. And is it right for you? When we were coming up with today's second segment, I was like, I came up with it. And you're like, huh, that's interesting. I was like, no, there's enough. We can talk about this. It is important. And I think that if this was not the season of the pandemic, that either you or I would be stepping out, we would probably have a representative from one of these um, vendors come out and really tell us a little bit more about this, because I think it is such a great concept. It really is. And, and it has gained popularity, not just in the, the, the lower price point homes, but it's also gained popular. We've seen it in a couple of one to $2 million homes. Absolutely. And it was the funniest thing is because I thought, wow, that is one perfect yard, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it was amazing. And then you realize that they had almost done, I think like a third of an acre in it. And it's amazing. So technology has really taken it to the space where it looks so real these days. So one of the things we wanted to talk about, is it right for you? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the big question. Um, this grass right now, um, it eliminates so much of your weekend routine, your weekend costs. And so if you're in not, if you're tired of fertilizing or if you're tired of having a lawnmower or mm -hmm. taking and maintaining, these are things that can really get rid of that. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, especially now that we, the, we've just become more conscious of water conservation, mm -hmm. you know, our St. Augustine grass takes a lot of water to maintain. Actually, it's actually banned in certain um, new areas where they don't allow it to actually be used anymore. It's Bermuda up north. Really? Yep. So there are things, and as we become more conscientious about some of the pesticides that we're using and how they may or may not be having a huge impact on the bees, mm -hmm. this is one of those things that could actually be a really gift to the environment in and of itself. Yeah, and it's great for lawns, it's great for dog runs, it's great for play areas, it's great for pool surrounds, uh, putting greens, decorative borders between yep. patio pavers. I mean, and, you use it anywhere. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that it can be used in so many of these different areas. Like one of the places that I see being perfect for me would be that there are certain trees in my yard that provide so much shade that no grass will grow under mm -hmm. that. And I've had people come out and look at it and they said, where well, grass doesn't grow, grass is not going to grow because it's too shady. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is we always have those areas where you have a dog that runs constantly through one portion of your yard and creates a trail. Mm -hmm. This can get rid of that. And the other thing is if you have a, a playground that where the swing is, you know that as a kid, you always drug your feet mm -hmm. and you wore that out. And so these are just ways for you to be able to create a yard that has a, a very clean look, mm -hmm. low maintenance, and also doesn't track a lot of the outside into the house as well. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it, it's all synthetic. That's the, the really cool thing about yeah. it. It's uh, polypropylene, uh, uh, polyethylene, and nylon. Yeah. And it's just woven together to create that really, you know, soft surface to go under your feet. And the technology has gotten so good because these, uh, in the past, they were really, really warm. And because of that heat, um, they were really uncomfortable to get in in the middle of the summer. But now they've created um, a, a, a thermo seal or something of that that is under, that actually absorbs that heat. The other thing, too, is that they have learned how to sew in a thatch layer mm -hmm. and that thatch layer provides that kind of that dead grass look that pre creates a more realistic mm -hmm. versus the 1970s palm springs turf grass that yeah, just was turf. yeah <laughs> as you can see there is a really good thatch right there the other thing too that they're doing is they're using um both uh, reclaimed rubber and sand that they actually uh, rake into the grass to create the, the blades to stand more up hmm. versus getting laid down. One of the things that, that I found interesting was that, so, you know, say you are somebody that likes Bermuda mm -hmm. or you are somebody that likes azoya grass, you can get this in the different varieties now where interesting. You, know, you used to not be able to do that. Nope. You used to only get the one green and it was really bright. Mm -hmm. So they've come a long way. And I think that one of the things is the cost that people have to kind of like begin to weigh out and balance. Yeah. It's, um, by what we can find online, it runs about $15 a square foot on average. And I think that everybody needs to realize that it's not just they're coming out and they're laying it. Mm -hmm. Like there is a moisture barrier that is placed to actually help absorb the water through and down. Um, and that there's also weed lining that is placed. And so these aren't just, they can do it typically in a day, but it's not just as simple as literally rolling and pinning it. Yeah. That's not how it goes. So... 
Yeah, and the the uh, I'm sorry the uh, the installation of it, like like you were saying, the, mm -hmm. the cost of it is is going to be spread out over an ownership or a lifetime of 15 to 20 years. Correct. So you can cut out after you have it installed. You can cut out fertilizing, get rid of all of your lawn equipment aside from a blower and maybe a rake. And if you, you can also cut out uh, any type of lawn service that you have. Basically, they say the only thing that you really need to do is hose it off occasionally and keep the leaves and everything blown off. Mm -hmm. They say that anytime things grow, it's typically because you've let something sit on there too long. Mm. Um, it's also pet friendly. So if your pet goes to the bathroom on it, hose it off and yeah, it's done. It, I mean, it, it, there are lots of great points to it. You know, just with what you said, it's easy to maintain. Uh, synthetic grasses are environmental, environmentally more friendly. Yeah. Um, and, and it saves you water. And these are all big things. One of the things that I didn't actually think would be, because I don't get them from it, but allergies, grass mm -hmm. allergies. And I thought, well, that's a really great thing that if you have small ones or if you yourself are have the allergy to grass, this is a really great way to eliminate that uh, and save some money and have a really easy yard to maintain year after year. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the drawbacks, uh, it is not completely maintenance-free, as you just said. You do have to keep it clean. you yep. got to keep everything picked up off of it. Um, it can't and absorb, uh, it can't absorb and break down pet urine. And so right. you do have to have some specialized areas that you're going to right. let your dogs go and be sure to keep very clean. Yep. And I, I think that we've even seen it used in Uptown now. I think that mm -hmm. some of the apartments have realized that the grass that is in but the little medians that they're in charge of taking care of by putting this grass down, it actually creates a, a cleaner look mm -hmm. from the street. And it's also easier for everyone to clean up after their pet. Mercer Square did that in their parkway around oh, the front of their building. Well, the, the Glorias on Carlisle also, that apartment complex that they share, mm -hmm. they also did that the other day. And I was like, well, that looks really great. Interesting. It's great. We've also seen it recently used in some of the new construction. Um, townhomes they put it on the balcony and i thought it was a really excellent design element at that point it was more than a yard it became more like a design element i loved it so share with us what you would do with turf grass if you did absolutely so i hope you found this helpful today interesting maybe possibly i hope so next week we're going to talk about painting your yard what no <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> and with that we want to be your realtors for life